Hi everyone, I'm Sarah from the Gettysburg Library and welcome to Little Rabbit Discovers a Secret Strength from the Treasury of American Indian Tales. Little Rabbit was a young Pueblo brave who lived a very happy and carefree life. There was nothing very special about Little Rabbit unless you were to say that his spirits were never dampened by a sad turn of events. When something went wrong and people were unhappy, Little Rabbit usually found his way to their side and would offer words of encouragement. The village in which Little Rabbit was born was like the Pueblo Adobe villages of centuries before him. Little Rabbit had to climb a ladder in order to enter his home because all ground floor rooms had only a roof entrance. By pulling up the ladder at night, families made their homes hard to enter. Little Rabbit had once watched several families make an adobe building several levels high. The walls were made of a mixture of yellowish clay and sand called adobe. The roofs were made of a heavy layer of the same adobe laid over a strong frame of log beams crisscrossed with poles, willow branches, sticks and grass, and, a, and desert brush. The Spaniards had taught the Pueblos how to mold the adobe, brick, adobe into bricks. Small holes were made for windows and doorways. Each family had one large room and the ground floor room, without windows or a doorway, was used by all the families for storage, initiation of the boys into secret societies, and for religious ceremonies. Because each floor was set back the depth of the room below, each level had a porch which was used by the Pueblo women for making cornbread, pottery, and baskets, and by the men to weave rugs and blankets. When religious ceremonies, dances, and games were taking place, these porches gave the whole family the best possible point from which to watch. Such was the village in which Little Rabbit had grown to the age of 12, a strong and tall young brave. One day he had just finished playing some running games with his friends and was returning to his home when one of his friends called to him, Come Little Rabbit, we are going to walk the ledges. Now, walking the ledges was a very difficult game and, most of the time, was forbidden by the parrots. But occasionally, some of the more daring young braves willing to chance their necks would organize a game of ledge walking. The idea was something like follow the leader, but far more dangerous. The boys would walk right on the edge of the roofs along the first floor and, if successful and daring enough, along the second and then along the third floor roof. As the boys went higher, fewer and fewer would take part, and fall from any, a fall from any one of the roofs would be bad, but a fall from the second or third could cause great injury or even death. Now, Little Rabbit was not a coward, but he hesitated to play the game because his father had told him that he was not to go without his father's permission, and Little Rabbit knew that this was one game his father would not permit him to play. So with sadness in his heart, he shouted back to the other boys that he had work to do and continued on his way home. Several days passed and each day a few of the older boys would gather to walk ledges and each day would ask Little Rabbit to take part and each day Little Rabbit would say no. Finally, it got to be too much for even Little Rabbit. The next time he was asked, he answered yes and soon was playing the very dangerous game. The boys had all completed the first ledge of the round, round floor and were starting for the second. Just as Little Rabbit reached the second ledge, a voice called out, Little Rabbit, my son, what are you doing? The rest of the braves scattered, but the surprise at hearing his father's angry voice nearby frightened Little Rabbit for a moment and he lost his balance. He tried to straighten up but went tumbling down the side of the dwelling. He managed to break his fall by grasping the ladder but was not able to hold on. When he landed, his leg was doubled under him and a sharp pain shot through his body, and then he fainted. When Little Rabbit awoke, he found he was stretched on his own bed and his father and mother were standing over him. I am sorry, my son, his father said softly. I did not mean to startle you so, but I was afraid for you and the fear in my heart gave harshness and anger to my voice. If I had waited until you were safely over the edge and then called to you, this terrible thing might not have happened. Do not blame yourself, said Little Rabbit. It is I who made the mistake. I disobeyed my father. I am truly sorry for that. If I had not been doing something wrong, I would, have not been, I would not have been startled when you called. It was a foolish thing for me to do. I let the other boys tease me into playing. It would have been braver for me to tell them, no, truly I am ashamed, my father. You must rest, my son. 
Your leg has been badly injured. When you have rested, we shall talk of this. With that, Little Rabbit's father left the house to continue his work. For many days, Little Rabbit lay in pain from his hurt leg, but more than his leg, his heart and mind were hurt from the unhappiness he had brought to his father by disobeying. He tried to talk with his mother about how he felt, but all his mother would say was, Do not worry so, Little Rabbit. Your father has forgiven you. But this was what, not what concerned Little Rabbit. His father now had to carry on the work of farming the corn and brains and cotton all alone for the family. This made Little Rabbit feel very unhappy. He wanted to do his share of work and he liked to see crops grow. His leg began to heal and soon Little Rabbit was able to hobble around with the aid of a stout staff. He began to help around the house as much as he could. Before long, he was able to limp out to the garden after his father and work a little there too. Many moons passed and his leg healed and became strong but it was twisted so that when Little Rabbit walked or ran, he would limp rather badly. The other braves, young braves felt sorry for Little Rabbit. Even though he could move about rather easily with his twisted leg, he really could not keep up with the other young braves in the many games they played. Soon he found that he was not being asked so often to play the really exciting games. One day, as Little Rabbit was seated in front of his home, his father was returning from the garden. As he came to where Little Rabbit was seated, he stopped and spoke gently. Why do you sit here so sad and forlorn, my son? Always you have been gay and happy, but lately you have become quiet and sad. Tell your father what it is that troubles you. And so Little Rabbit explained that because he could not keep up with them in the games of speed and skill, the other boys no longer invited him to play. My son, if you are going to sit here and let your life pass you by because your leg will not obey every command it is given, you will soon become very unhappy and bitter. You will be of no use to anyone, even yourself. You must turn your thoughts to other things. If you cannot run fast, you must practice. If you cannot jump, you must practice. I have tried my father, but it seems to do no good. My leg is strong, but the way it is twisted causes me to limp. If I try to run, my leg beds under me. I have tried day after day, but it is of no use. You cannot sit here and think of the world as a sad, unhappy place. Such thoughts will make your leg feel even more twisted than it really is. You must be brave for your opportunity to raise yourself to be more than just an ordinary Indian brave. You have a battle inside yourself now that calls for great courage and wisdom. How you will overcome it, I do not know, but you must try, my son. That night, Little Rabbit could not go to sleep because he was thinking about what his father had said. Maybe he had not been working hard enough to make his leg do what he commanded. Tomorrow, he would try harder. And so every day, Little Rabbit practiced very hard. For many hours each week, he would exercise his leg. Finally, one day, he awoke feeling strong and fit. After breakfast, he went forth from his home to find his friends for a game. When he located the, them, they were beginning a foot race which would take them around the village. Without waiting to be asked, Little Rabbit trotted into line just as the race started. The other boys were off to a big lead, but that didn't worry Little Rabbit. He remembered what his father had said and, with each running step, he repeated the words, I must try. The race was going strong. Soon, to his own surprise, Little Rabbit began to pass the other boys one after another. When he, what he had lost in ability, he made up in stamina, the strength to go on and on. His many days of practice were now providing, proving valuable. As the other boys began to tire and drop back, Little Rabbit passed the leading young brave. Then he began to widen the gap between himself and the next runner until nearly 100 paces separated him from the second place runner when he crossed the finish line. When all the runners had come panting to the finish line, they gathered around Little Rabbit, slapping his shoulders and congratulating him upon his victory. Finally, one of the young braves asked, how did you manage to stay, stay so fresh to the very end? Well, you see, said Little Rabbit quietly, when I fell from the ledge that day and broke my leg, I was sure that I was being punished for disobeying my father's wishes. After my leg healed and I began to play again, I found that I could not keep up with you in your games. 
Once again, I thought that I was still being punished, but my father told me I must try harder. This brought me courage. Once again, I began practicing every day to learn to run and jump even though my leg was twisted. I do not have the skill that I used to have, but I now have endurance, which may stand me in very good stead later on, as it has here today.